Hey there, horror movie tea sippers. The following podcast episode will contain spoilers for the movie we are about to review. If you have not seen the movie and do not wish to have anything ruined prematurely, please do not continue to watch or listen until you have seen the movie. And welcome to the Horror Movie Tea Podcast. Today, it is the start of Asian Horror Month, one of our favorite theme months. I guess all of our theme months are our favorite theme months. That's why we made them theme months. But anyways. <laughs> <laughs> but That's neither here nor there. <laughs> we are covering Ugetsu, which was requested by Keith, or Bored Now, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. But before we go into the review, let's grab our cups and talk about tea. I'm drinking the Republic of Tea, the Crown, the Princess's Peach Bellini Tea. It's got <laughs> black tea. It's going to be a fun one. <laughs> peach, apricot, vanilla cream, and champagne flavors, monk fruit, and peach bits. We got we got episodes to record, so we're going to yeah. breeze through it. No, it is fine. And I am having Republic of Tea Cinnamon Vanilla that if I can find... Where it is. There we go. It has caffeine-free rubos, natural cinnamon, and vanilla flavors. And thank you so much to the Republic of Tea for allowing us to continue to do what we love. And for our tea sippers, bring yourself a cup of tea, sit back, relax, and we hope you enjoy the review. Before I get with the summary, I do have to do a trigger warning. Yes. Um, there is trigger warning for graphic indication of general violence and sexual violence. Yes. Is there anything else? Not that I can think of. No. But yeah, it, it's pretty like, like, even though it's implied violence, it's... Oof. There's war. They're in the middle of a war. Mm-hmm. And there's implied thankfully they didn't show it rape yeah. so i wrote a summary but i'm realizing that didn't really tell much about what it's about but we're i'm gonna go with it I, i'm committed it's fine. so it's a japanese historical drama and fantasy film based on two stories that combine elements of the period drama genre with a ghost story attached so for entertainment this one's kind of tough because I was reading up on like the, the history of it and what it means and all of that. And I can appreciate what it represents. But as far as a movie itself, it, it's it's one that I'm like, I'm okay just watching it once and not yeah. really revisiting it. And I mean, a lot of it because the content is pretty rough. Is a, the best way I can put it. But anyway, so for entertainment, I put a 6.5. The acting overall is well done, and it, it and it feels like it's a historical drama. Like It does, um, for sure. Like, there's maybe some reactions that are more over the top, but, like, overall, like, whenever they're running, trying to, like, save their lives and stuff like that, like, their reactions and the horror of, like, whenever... They're grabbing the one woman to do stuff with her. It's just like those reactions felt very dr like in that scene. I actually felt very uncomfortable and I wasn't sure how far I could make it into it. But then that's when they like right when I'm like, oh, God, I'm reaching my limit. They cut it and then they it mm -hmm. goes to like after it. So it's like they're very good at making the emotions feel raw and real. Reading on the, uh, I read the different interpretations of the movie, and one person said that the movie expresses regret about the pro-war extremism that Japan had leading up to World War II. And I also thought it was interesting, kind of attached to that, that scene that made me so uncomfortable. Um, I thought it was interesting that they brought up, quote-unquote, comfort women, because at least, I don't know how much it's brought up in Japan, but in the U.S., I had no idea what comfort women were. And do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay. Because, like... I'm surprised you didn't. No, like, none of none of my education about World War II, like, the, like, schooling, as well as, like, documentaries I would watch about World War II, none of them brought up that part. It was very recently whenever... 
I saw an interview of one of those comfort women from World War II was interviewed as just like, holy crap. Like, yeah. But anyways. It's unpleasant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, war is a terrible, terrible thing. Yeah. Makes people do a lot of terrible things. But anyways. Yeah. <laughs> so one another interpretation that I thought was kind of interesting is like with the the main character that's like trying to go out and be a samurai. Um, they were purposely trying to represent the vanity of a man because he's neglecting his family. Um, and it's supposed to a lot of people believe it's supposed to be a critique of the historic men and the feudal Japanese culture. Because it's like, by him neglecting his family, he failed to appreciate what he had already been blessed with. He had a good life, and in the process, he loses that. Mm -hmm. Well, they both did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Just one went the the way of fighting, and the other tried to go the way of, like, wealthy merchant. Yeah. Um, And then another thing, uh, just just these seems fascinated me, and that's kind of what I focused more on. Um, Because it's like the movie itself is very hard for me to get any substance from it, just because it's one of those movies where I have to watch it a few times to fully understand. And so me reading about what other people found the interpretations of, I'm like, that's, that's freaking genius. Like, yeah, I don't know if I would have ever been able to pick some of that stuff up. But one a parallel that was interesting is both Lady Wakasa and Miyagi are killed by a male-dominated society or by the same the same man. And uh or sorry, they're killed by a male-dominated society and they're both wronged by uh uh Genjiro. And so a lot of people kind of consider this to be a feminine or a feminist film because uh, it's exploring the negative impact of the patriarchy. But I I don't know. Maybe that's a stretch. But um, I could see where they're coming from with it. I did find that the parallels were interesting. Yeah. Though. And then uh, this is one thing that, of course, went right over my head. Uh, Genjiro's pottery, it like it evolves in three fa- phases. Like first is like reflecting uh, Mizoguchi's changing approach, or sorry, begins with the pottery for commercial reasons, and then it shifts to pure aesthetics. Um, while isolated with La- Lady Wakasa, and then finally moves on to a style that reflects life and strives to understand it. So I thought that was kind of interesting, but yeah, of course I didn't notice that at all. Um, but yeah, it's like overall, I think it's a movie that's worth what I think it's a movie that's worth watching once, um, especially like maybe read up about it a little bit yeah. more before watching it because it kind of helps you appreciate it a little bit more. But it's not a film that I'm going to revisit necessarily. Yeah, but it, it's kind of like uh, rewatching the horror classics where it like not all of them are necessarily like ones that you want to watch over and over, but you can appreciate what they are. Yeah. So that's why I got for entertainment. Don't be mad at me bored now, but I give it a five. <laughs> <laughs> this is not my cup of tea. I do appreciate what they were trying to convey and show, but it's, it's not my thing. <laughs> and honestly, watching the movie made me so frustrated. <laughs> And angry with a lot of the characters almost the entire time. Now, hormones might have come into play here and there. (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) Just a bit. But it's one that I'm not mad that I saw. Um, And again, I appreciate what they were trying to convey and show. And it's a very artful film. But I probably won't be watching it again. (laughs) Like, honestly, in the movie, everyone sucks. Apart from the main guy's wife and kid, who get left behind. Yeah. It really does highlight greed and how it changes people. And it's not just monetary greed, but it's greed for glory, greed for fame, uh, for appreciation for material things. Good way of putting it, yeah. Better life and not appreciating what someone has. So, always wanting more. Um, it's 
a very chaotic movie, which makes sense. I mean, war is chaos, but it still was a little hard to keep track of who's who at times. Um, there's just so much. <laughs> I was so frustrated <laughs> with all of them. But with the the guy that became a samurai, he got it based on lies. <laughs> So it's like lying on your resume and getting a high position. Yeah, that that's he's not, not qualified necessarily for. the most honorable thing to it's do really for something not, that, and it's supposed to be an honorable yeah, position. Yeah, that he got. Yeah, and it's just, which I'm sure happened fairly often, but it just seemed very. They were definitely trying to make a point. <laughs> I was also extremely frustrated with his relationship with his wife because the wife she was very concerned and she had valid concerns yes of him going into the war he hadn't had any training or anything yeah. he had never been in a battle or anything like that so i can understand him wanting to fight um he wanted it for the wrong reasons but i can understand why he wanted to fight she was almost verbally abusive in trying to talk him out of it. Yeah. And I feel like if she had approached it differently, it might have made somewhat of a difference at least. Yeah, because I feel like whenever you take that approach, it can make people like... It pushes them further into it a yeah, lot of times. Yeah. Reaffirm what they want to do. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it it wasn't a very good, healthy situation, really, for either of them. Um, Because he was clearly neglecting her and ignoring what she wanted and what she was saying. He wouldn't even listen to her. Yeah. But she also wasn't listening to him or trying to give more reasons why he shouldn't go that he would actually listen to. Like, she just kept hounding him on one specific thing and <laughs> calling him stupid. Like, <laughs> that's not going to help. No so it wasn't very healthy. Um, the other couple, I feel awful for the wife, <laughs> who was just trying to take care of her family and trying to keep them all together and take care of their son. And the guy leaves them there with no one to help them, no prospects, very, very little supplies, and tells them, take the mountain area, don't go home right away. Because there's people that will likely try to kill you. <laughs> I'll be back within a week. Doesn't come back for months, if not years. Yeah. <laughs> so completely disregards his family, which was one of the things that he wanted to become more successful for. Like, he wanted to give them a good life. He kept talking about wanting to give his wife nicer things to have nicer things for their house, to have a better future for their son. But then he ignores them completely <laughs> and just wants the cushy life with a ghost. So that was not okay at all. Um, it was a little hard to tell in the scene that the wife died, honestly. Like, it seemed that she was just upset because she was just robbed. Hmm. It didn't click until a little later that, oh, they actually, like, stabbed her or something. They, they killed her. <laughs> Yeah. Like, there for a minute, I couldn't tell if it was her yelling in the scene or the kid. Mm. So, that part could have been done a little bit better, in my opinion. It was a little vague. But I do appreciate that the wife's spirit got at least some kind of closure, in a way. Like, he did come back, and he did say he was sorry, and he wanted their family, and... He was there for his son, and he was there to stay, and for her as well. He he came back for them both, eventually. But it was still kind of, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> very, very frustrating. So that's what I had for entertainment. It was just a very all-round frustrating movie for me. Again, I'm not mad that I watched it. I'm just mad at the movie itself. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's difficult to watch movies that are, like, a critique of things. Especially if it you is. don't know. Because it's like, you're like, why are these people yeah. so shitty? <laughs> it's a completely different culture, and I'm sure there are things that I missed 
and interpretation and everything. So take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's my opinion. I'm trying to think of any examples of American movies that are like commentary on Americans and just kind of like have assholey characters, but I can't. I'm sure there are some, but none pop into mind at the moment there's like scenes like the yeah. like the beginning like krampus like the beginning of krampus yes. like that definitely is a, a good commentary on yes. uh i mean i guess maybe maybe not american specifically but for sure capitalism uh-huh. several scenes come to mind from a christmas horror story as well yeah yeah but that's the closest we've yeah. got eh, that we've reviewed <laughs> I'm sure there are many others, but again, it, I just my mind is blank at the moment. Yeah. Um. So for realism, I kind of struggled with this one because it's like it's a historical drama, but it's still a drama, and it's also got fantasy in it. Yeah. So, yeah. So maybe I'll revise this in the future, but right now I'm giving it a three point five. The scenes are like, like I said before, feel like raw and real and maybe like slightly dramatic. But like the relationship with the characters, like with how you're uh, the the wife kind of insulting the husband, trying to get him to change his mind. It, it just like seems like that. It's like all of what they did, I could see happening in some circumstances. Um, and then the fact that like the the guy had the dream to become the samurai and then like left his family. And it's like, there are people that do that. Yeah. They're not the greatest of people. Yeah. But, um, but they're out there. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, I can't, I can see in the realm of possibility, but it's, I don't know. But it's like, we also aren't experts of that era. Nope. Or so, that culture. Yeah. So we're, pr- so it's also hard to gauge like really is. how realistic that is in and of itself. Uh, I was surprised how the women, maybe is because they're more like, I was surprised h- how uh, strong some of the female characters were. Yes. That was refreshing because mm-hmm. I feel like uh, not just with Asian culture, but uh, when it comes to like older movies, just the female characters tend to be a lot more like subdued like and wilting flowers. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that was refreshing. <laughs> but yeah, that's honestly all I got for realism because I was having a brain fart. I'm like, why do I yeah. put? I don't know. Because it's like I was trying to focus more on the movie itself, and then it's over. I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So was I. I gave it a three. <laughs> Hey, so, not too different. Yeah. Um, it was extremely hard to rate it because we don't know that culture very well. We don't know that era very well. Um, we had very, very little time to look into it for research and all. Well, and then honestly, I don't so. even know if modern day people can really rate it as well. Like, you know, maybe someone coming from that time period would be able to. Maybe. You know, but anyways. But it's it's very difficult to rate um, because of various factors, is what I'm saying. Yes. So, going off of broad strokes, war is chaos and hell. <laughs> yeah. So, them having to leave their homes, abandon their homes and everything, so that um, the wandering troops don't kill them or force them into servitude or anything, or yeah. take advantage of them in other ways... Yeah, That's the accurate. war atrocities were definitely yes, realistic. absolutely, and they were horrible. I feel like absolutely horrible. They were more blunt with the possibility of those type of war atrocities than other war movies. A lot of them, yes. Um, they definitely were not afraid to to put them in for sure. They didn't shy away from them. Not all of them, anyway. Yeah, I feel like they kept going back to the house. And to the village and all, when they really shouldn't have or probably wouldn't have. Yeah. Except maybe to grab more supplies. But then I feel like they would have stayed away because it was clearly unsafe until such time as it would have been safe. Especially for a mother 
trying to care for her son. Yeah. So that seemed definitely off. The guy that wanted to be a samurai begging to join the samurai's group. I feel like begging would not have been the way to go. And with how much pride a lot of them show, it felt a little out of place. I feel like they might have been trying to play up the his character being naive and overeager and yeah. a bit of a coward still. But it just seemed a little off. Um, also, the fact that they're like, get some armor and get a spear and you can join us. And I feel like he would have been an even bigger liability like that. And they wouldn't have let him fight regardless. So that part seemed a little off, too. Yeah. Like, they... You don't just say, oh, yeah, if you have armor and a weapon, then we'll take you. It's... If you're in battle, you're going to look to the person next to you for support. So if they're not trained at all... Mm -hmm. <laughs> no one's going to want to stand with them or have them stand with you. <laughs> So, it, and they're not going to want to look after him and train them. They don't have time for that. So, no. Um, I am surprised that his wife wasn't killed after the assault. And that they gave her money even after that. She's one of the lucky ones. As awful as that is to say. The situation itself is horrendous. But the fact that she wasn't killed and that she was given money. It could have gotten a lot worse. A lot worse. I am somewhat surprised that she became a comfort girl after that. Of her own free will, it seemed to be. She didn't have many other options, to be fair. But she could have at least tried to... Or they could have at least shown her trying to go back to the stall where they were selling stuff. Because she initially left the stall where they were selling pottery to go after her husband. So she left the only other person she knew in that area and didn't go back. Didn't ask for help or anything. Now, the other guy did leave the stall to drop the stuff off at the ghost house or mansion that was actually not there. Um, I want to know what happened to the rest of his stuff. Because he asked the person at the next stall over, hey... Watch my stuff. I'll be back <laughs> later today. And he never came back. So did the other guy sell his stuff too? <laughs> Just kind of claim it after a little while and sell it? Yeah. Because I feel like that's probably what would have happened. <laughs> but yeah, he just left the rest of his wares there. <laughs> Didn't try to sell it or anything. He's just like, oh, okay. So yeah, I'll just stay with this chick. Despite the fact that I'm married with a kid who's waiting for me, but okay. And the whole scene where he was trying to get away from the ghost lady, too, was just kind of a little out there. Yeah. But again, don't know the full lore, so I could have missed some stuff. Yeah, that's one thing that's interesting about... Well, I guess... On, on American Horror, a lot of it's based off of lore, too. Yeah. Um, so never mind. I'm just talking out of my ass. I wanted more of the lore. It took forever. In the preview that I watched, it really showed a lot of the scenes with, like, the ghost chick. Oh, so you thought there was more So I thought that. there was more of the ghost kind of lore Can't in there. Can't trust the trailer. Nope. Nope. There's a reason I haven't watched many trailers lately. I should have trusted my instincts. <laughs> Though, to be fair, the trailers convinced us to watch some of the the this other Asian horror movies, and those this ended up being pretty pretty oh, yeah. good. Yeah. So, which we'll get to later they this did. month. So, but this one, this one did it a disservice. So, I was also frustrated with the fact that it was supposed to, it was presented to me as a a ghost story during wartime. And there was not much ghost story. <laughs> it was mostly war. So, I'm mad. <laughs> I was lied to. But that's that's most of what I got. Yeah, like, like overall, 
if you like to watch films to yeah. kind of appreciate what they are and understand like the critiques or influence that they might have, then it's definitely one giving a watch. It's free on YouTube. Yeah. We'll uh, link it below. But if you're wanting just like a for entertainment's sake kind of movie, then no. This one's not for you. This is a an artful historical film. Yeah. Mostly. So. But thank you so much for joining us today. And please comment on what you thought of the movie. If you'd like to recommend a movie, game, or tea, and keep up to date with our content, you can find us on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Discord, and most places you listen to podcasts. And if you'd like to support the podcast, please subscribe, like, and share our content. If you'd like to support us monetarily, we do have our Teespring and our PayPal donate button, and we have our affiliate link with Republic of Tea available. It does not affect the price of the tea, but it does allow us to continue to do what we love. And all of those sites will be mentioned down below. And until the next time, guys, stay safe and stay spoopy. Bye! Bye.